which is also a function call, which is defined above, plus, I'm still back in fancy noun, so ornate noun plus pick from preposition or relative pronoun or nothing. And if you look at the diagram in Gerd Electric Bach, the arrows coming out of ornate noun point to relative pronoun, nothing, the end, and preposition. So you can make this into a computer program, which is what I did. So if you look at my program for a little while, you'll notice that all the arrows in the diagrams correspond to function calls in the, in the program. And they're recursive, because they eventually loop back on themselves. So here, Hofstadter is trying to communicate the fact that languages themselves are defined by recursive grammars. This is why we can nest sentences inside of each other. It's recursive. So recursion leads to nesting, and sometimes infinite nesting. And that's, what, that's where fractals come from. So right after this program in the handout, there's a sample output. So just read through some of those sample outputs. They're, they're pretty, pretty funny. I have an old version. Can I look at someone's handout? Just to read. Just hand out. So small, small bagel inside the strange cow. Uh, it sort of it makes sense as an English sentence, and it was generated by this computer program. So I think that's just fascinating. But of course, some of them don't make sense. Like large, small bagel that runs large, that small, large horn. Like it just doesn't make any sense. So next example. Uh, so the next example on page five, I think, is a tree. We're going to make a tree picture using recursive functions. So I'm going to, uh, I'm going to write some pseudocode. It's not real code. It's sort of pseudocode to communicate the idea of what this program is doing. So we have a function that grows a tree. It starts from a single branch. And I'll do it at that one here. This is like the starting point. This is the entry point. So it says uh, class, all this stuff, tree. Tree, parentheses, that gets called when the program starts. So this function call, grow tree, 0 0.50, trunk height, all this stuff, is this first one. This is what initiates the process. And then what the function does is um, pretty much if the depth is greater than 0, um, So this tree function uh, calls itself twice, once for each branch. So the first time the program calls this function, it makes this. It draws it on the screen. So notice um, here it, it adds the actual line. If, if you look at the, the, the code. The, it says add new JV line x1, x2, all that stuff. That actually adds a line to the screen. I wish I could you know, show you the actual code running, but I can't. So this is the first time. And then depth is the number of times it's going to branch out. And so depth is 11. It's going to make a big tree. Um, but what it's going to do is make two sub-branches. So grow tree. This, this one cor correlates to this one here. 
and this one corresponds to this one here. And uh, if you look at the code in the handout, it says grow tree x2, y2. x2, y2 is the endpoint of the previous branch. Root length times size factor. So size factor is a factor by which it's going to scale. Them. So this would be like maybe half the size, or 0.7. Uh, size factor is 0.58, so it's about half the size. And root angle plus angle factor, root angle minus angle factor. These are in the two grow tree function calls. Angle factor, which is point, well, pi over 4, it's exactly 45 degrees. So each time it branches, the, 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 the two branches are going to branch out at that angle. And so here, say, say we do depth of 4, when we call it the first time. The depth here is going to be 4. And then you pass into the function depth minus 1. So here, inside, inside the function that's generating this, depth is going to be 3. And so it's going to keep going down until depth is 0. So here, depth is, well, depth is 4, 3. Two, one, and it does it on this side too. So it just keeps going like this. This is this is a fractal, and you could imagine if you were to continue this infinitely. Like, instead of saying depth of 10 or 11, just say depth of infinity. Say, theoretically, if we could do this, uh, this, this shape could be zoomed in on infinitely, forever. And this is the notion of a fractal. And it would look the same as it does on the, on the large scale. So any questions about the tree? So next, we're going to do a, the Koch curve. The Koch curve is sort of similar to the tree except that the rules are different. So first, con conceptually, this is what a Koch curve is. You start with a line, or in some cases, a triangle to make, make the whole thing. And then you divide it into three parts, and then you make an equilateral triangle, meaning the sides are all the same, out of the thing in the middle, and get rid of this line. So this is the rule go from a line to this thing. And then this rule is applied to each one of these segments. So you go like this. And so on, like to each of these smaller segments. So the fact that like the simple rule is being applied to something over and over again, and the thing it's being applied to is the result of the previous execution of the rule makes it recursive. So I'm going to keep drawing it. Let's look at the actual code, the program. Um, it says Koch. I think it's on page 7. 